Hello everyone and welcome to a um, kind of proof of concept video. So what I'm gonna do here is uh, more or less something I've done before. Uh, you can kind of see it. Uh, this is not a radiator, this is a bucket filled with uh, water. And... Sorry. I do have uh, the window open and a fan blasting in cold air. So it is very cold in here right now. Uh, GPU collection. And then we have the test bench right here. Now in the test bench is currently the GTX 580 uh, Founders Edition. Well, you, you, we weren't calling them Founders Editions back then. It's, a, it's the uh, reference card directly from NVIDIA. I have a Volt modded V core on it because I encountered some weirdness with uh, NVVDD, so I just wanted. Well, this thing can't have software problems, that's basically why. Um, and I've set it to. Well, actually, I am still using software voltage control a bit. Um, so when I put in 1075 millivolts in software, this brings me to around 1.25 volts at the VRM and around 1.23 to 1.24 behind the core. And at that uh, voltage, I did. Well, I mean, I, I did bench the card already. Um, so, yeah. Um, and what I'm gonna do now, I don't know if it's gonna go further. But what I've done here is basically, instead of the uh, usual water cooling loop, I now have a bucket filled with water. Uh, there's no radiator and this, is just the tubes. Then there's a, an, an aquarium pump in there to just shuffle around the water a bit. Um, then here's my pump, which is powered externally by this power supply, which there's really no reason to, but I just... It was easier for testing because I don't have to turn on the test bench for that. Um, so yeah, and then if we take the fan away, you can kind of see I cut the base, more like broke the base plate of this thing. I literally just took pliers and broke uh, certain parts of the base plate until I just left, was left with this thing, uh, which is now cooling the VRM. And uh, yeah, so I'm putting these two fans over it, uh, this one. You can see there's the water block right there. Uh, it is direct die, there is no IHS on this GPU. Um, and the memory is Samsung 1 gigabit E die. Uh, I haven't overvolted it though. Um, it might clock better though. Like, there's no, there's no heat sinking on the memory. But it's just, it's cold ambient. The water in the cooling loop is pretty cold and I have this Silent Wings 3 blasting uh, cold air at it. Uh, which, from what I can tell, is pretty good for just um, blasting air at things. I used to have uh, some Corsair ML140s here, but I swapped them around because it turns out these things are apparently not that good for static pressure, but the Corsair ones are, so these came out of my daily system while the Corsairs went in, so now I have these for my test bench. Um, so yeah, I uh, guess I'm gonna turn this on now. Um, I do not have any ice to put in this bucket, though I am I, I do want to do chilled water this winter. I can't tell, like, I don't know how far it is away in terms of time. I want to do it, I can't tell you why exactly uh, right now. Um, I Like, right now I don't have any um, ice to put in there. Um, it's just like, yeah, just cold ambient. Like hoping that just the, the by having the window open and then air blowing in into the room, just hoping that the water is cold enough to do a couple runs of uh, fire strike and see where the card goes to. Um, yeah, so I guess it's uh, setup time. So I'm gonna put the camera on the uh, on the other stand that I don't have to carry around with me, and we're gonna see each other soon. So here we are, test bench time. This is a new monitor, actually. Uh, I got a Gigabyte M27Q for Christmas, so this is my old main screen. This is an Acer XF240H. And this is a 144Hz one, though it's at 120Hz right now, because we are uh, on DVI. So, yeah, so with this voltage set in software, we should get around 1.25 volts at the VRM. Um, I'm putting the uh, usual 1.25 volts at the VRM on this one because, well, it is a reference card. <laughs> and 
Well, um, the VRM uh, might uh, blow up if I give it more. Like, I've ran it on, on 1100 on this, which uh, it's like close to 1.3 volts ish. Like, it, it, it is no actual, like, you put in 50 millivolts more here, you don't actually get more, like, you don't actually get 50 millivolts more, you get something like 65 to 70 millivolts more, actually. Um, which is probably just the, the volt mode interfering with however this uh, voltage setting in here works. Um, yeah, but I'm not gonna waste any time, um, uh, yeah, having the card run and heat up the water. You can see we are at 25 degrees idle. And... I'm gonna put the uh, the overlay on for this one run. So these are the last successful settings that I had. Uh, the memory is not maxed out, I think, but the core pretty much is. Like five megahertz more won't pass, at least the last time I ran it. Um, I'm just gonna run this uh, one to kind of show you what it looks like. Uh, also to kind of figure out if... Um, like I did run it on the uh, water bucket before. I just used less water and slightly warmer, like I didn't cool my room. Uh, I didn't open the window and purposefully cool down my ambient temperature. Uh, so yeah, let's see how much this helps. Uh, last time it was at 39 degrees maximum temperature on the first run. Um, depending on how fast the water heats up on this, I think it does heat up, like we might be able to do just five runs or something. Um, yeah, uh, but we can wait. Like it's still gonna perform pretty nicely. We uh, just might not be able to max the core quite as much. Yeah, those temperatures don't look that different, actually. Mm. Like I mean, I reached 39 in at the end of GT2, so this might climb to 39. Actually, it, it might stay slightly under it for the first run, but I think we're gonna go up to it on the second. Uh, yeah. And actually, this might pull a new platform. Like I'm, I'm gonna call it platform record from now on, which is like that uh, best score that 3D Mark shows you at the end for your CPU and graphics card combo. Um, this thing took the single GPU. Actually, I'm not sure. I might have had it before, but now I definitely have the single GPU record for GTX 580s running on an 1800X, which is what I mean by that platform record. Like, it's it's not really impressive because it just applies to people who run the same CPU and GPU combo. But having the best score is still having the best score, even though for a very niche category. And yeah, so this very card a few hours before did pull that record, and actually one of the fans kind of shifted. I'm gonna fix that real quick. Okay, we're back. So yeah, uh, depending on... on what it is... Now this might, this might be a new platform record. For all I know, because I I got the like these are the same settings, and if this run is bad, no, well, actually this is will score worse because the overlay is on. If you turn the overlay off, you kind of like I think you do get a better score. So this mm, is probably not going to result in a uh, higher record than what I already have, which is like five thousand eight hundred something. But yeah, mm, I actually didn't pay attention to the temperature shit. Ah, well, we have MSR Afterburner, we can just look at that once we're finished here. Uh, what I'm curious about, I think next I'm just gonna pump the voltage a bit more. That will increase our temperatures, of course, but we might be able to do uh, 1050. Uh, it was a ha hard wall before. No, hey, this actually is a uh, new platform record. Here, we uh, 5872 and my other one was 5859. So yeah, um, new platform record. That's also higher than what I had before. Okay, so apparently having the overlay on is that bad? Like, I thought it would impact your, your score, but mm, apparently it doesn't. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna go to 1100 here, 
and try 1050. Uh, so see what this does. If it doesn't run 1050, I'm just not gonna bother with um, doing more with the core because if I, I think it actually passed 1045 at an even lower voltage than what we just ran. So this is like the part where it gets exponential, like where you have to add exponentially, exponential, I can't, I can't English, uh, where you have to apply way more voltage for a very small gain in core clocks. And we are already outside the uh, solder safety limit for the card. Um, so yeah, this this might crash, like this crashed before. It might get pretty far into the benchmark, but this never passed before. But hey, let's see, our temperatures are... Considering we just bumped the voltage, th those temperatures are actually better. Uh, it went to 42 before. So, yeah, I guess we just have, like, I'm using more water now. More water means more thermal mass, which means it takes longer to heat up, so... Yeah. Um, also, I didn't have cold ambient, so the water in the bucket actually cools down slightly more than uh, when you just have it sitting in that bucket. Um, but yeah, like if this passes, uh, I'm gonna try pushing the core some more. But I think we quickly, pretty quickly max it out. Like I think the best I've ever run was 1065 on the uh, 580 power edition, which is just the lightning with the prod lasers removed. Uh, and that was at... Actually, I don't know. It was at, I think, 1.3 volts? Might be lower, actually. Might have been something like 1.28. So that is about the voltage that we're running right now. Though the lightning PCB has literally twice as much... Actually, more than twice as much VRM as this has. Like, this is a 6-phase, the Lightning has a 12-phase, and the Lightning has way better MOSFETs than this has, and also a better output filter, and just generally it is a better PCB than the uh, reference one. Um, so yeah, which is like... I mean, the reference cards are okay if you just want to mod them a bit, but like, getting really impressive scores out of them is kind of... I mean, it is not impossible. <laughs> you can mod the crap out of memory, and you can... Um, you could do what I tried, which I would not advise, which is literally just, like, swap out MOSFETs for better ones. Or you could, you know, just, like, do a knee power. Uh, I'm not gonna do that, though, because I already have three GTX 580s that have a way better VRM than this. And if anything, I'm gonna turn this. I'm, like, like, if anything, I'm gonna turn this one into an e-power. I'm not gonna e-power it um, because, like, I have so many 580s, and I like the motherboard that this test bench is on right now, which is an X370 Gaming K7 from Gigabyte. This only does two cards. My that's another new record. Nice. That's almost 40 points. Yeah, we, we had a pretty pla flat 200 before, right? And that actually that actually went down, I think. I think that was like 21,600 before. Okay. But um, let's, go, let's go in small steps, because like this is where it really stops. Um, like in my experience, GTX 580s, w w without like in the SOTA 1.2 to 1.3 volts range, in my experience, GF 110s, which is the GPU that 580s are based around, they start topping out at 1020 to 1060. Uh, this is one of my better GPUs, which is why it's running 1050 right now. Though actually, like as I've said, it didn't pass before. This is probably just because of the uh, cold. But well. Um, yeah, but this is like the second best GPU that I have. Uh, the the best one would be the uh, Power Edition Lightning, which actually has a really annoying thing because it uh, I can't run that one direct die because it won't work correctly. Like it has a very annoying thing where 
you need the exact like it you need a very specific amount of mounting pressure for it to work if the mount if mounting pressure is just very slightly off uh you're gonna get artifacts um I already reflowed that card so many times i am I am pretty sure the BGA array is completely okay and it's something different causing the card to not work properly. Um, because it's not the only card I have with this problem. The 560Ti448 has the exact same thing. And it crashed. Okay. Set that one. Yeah, so... Yeah, so I'm not gonna push the core more now. Um, I'm gonna keep it at 1050 and just hope that it's not getting too hot. Uh, and I'm now actually gonna try to uh, get some more memory clock out of it. Because this card does have 1 gigabit Samsung eDie. And I've run the GTX 580 Direct Suit 2 on cold water before. And on that card, the memory really really liked getting cold so I'm going to 2400 straight like I, I think wait wh why, why do I make that whole binning thing when I don't remember the numbers let me look at it and 3d mark start please um, what did this card do it did 2300 memory so yeah what we just ran used to be the max for it that was on the uh, stock heatsink, though. So now it sh should, like, it doesn't have, like, the memory doesn't have a heatsink on it now. I just hope that it's cold enough from ambient having a fan on it and having the uh, card somewhat chilled. Like, it's tap water, and it is, like, it's colder than, than ambient. So it's somewhat chilled, even though the temperatures are not very impressive. Um, yeah. So let's just hope that the memory does this now. Um, and then... I mean, we've, we already have the, the platform record, but it could still go higher. Actually, if I really wanted scores, I should push the CPU as well. Because on HW bot, the um, total uh, score counts and not your in, not your GPU score. So, I can push the CPU to like 25 megahertz more without really without really doing anything about the voltage. It's not gonna be super stable at that point. Like 4 gigahertz is stable enough to render videos on it. Like, I mean, it, it, yeah, I did. Um, I stress tested it with Ada 64. I didn't do Prime 95 because. That one sadly produced so much heat that it just got way too hot and then just crashed because, well, it got too hot. Um, so I did IDA, it passed IDA for like, I think I did two, two hours of IDA, which is more than I tested my 8700K for, and that's been stable at 5.1 for over a year now, I think. Um, so yeah, it might not be Prime 95 stable because heat, but it it's been rendering my videos at this clock for a while and it's been fine and this actually looks like it's gonna pass like I don't see any artifacts only problem might be that actually our core is getting too hot and we might get that uh, crash thing again um, but yeah so I could like the... ah oh, it crashed yeah of course it crashed okay I'm going, I'm going down to 10... 10.45 so yeah, um, I could push the CPU some more to get proper scores. I'm not gonna bother with that right now because this is just a test run. Um, pretty random filler video, sort of, that's already getting close to 20 minutes now. Um, yeah. Like, um, one, one, thing, one thing that I will do is I will volt mod the GTX 580 Direct CO2. Let's go back on the voltage as well. That should remove some of our heat load. Um, so as you are, the temp went up already from 25. So it is heating up. Uh, so yeah, uh, wh what I'm gonna do um, 
is I will Volt Mod V-Core, maybe also V-Mem on the uh, GTX 580 Dark CO2, the other card that I ran actually chilled. Um, and once I have voltage control on that thing, I'm just gonna do the same thing uh, to that card, which has a much better VRAM, it, it does have an 8 phase with better MOSFETs and a better output filter. GPU on that one is uh, it walled at around 1025 before, but that was at 1.2 volts flat. And I think it was, like, it was on chilled water, but I think it was with the IHS still at that point. Um, which I'm not so sure, I think it was with the IHS. Yeah, I think it was with the IHS. Um, so yeah. And yeah, I'm gonna run that card with uh, chilled water. Uh, ideally, I would want to run one of my lightnings. Only problem is, like, the first lightning, um, it's not that great on core. And I think I have to remove the uh, base plate for that, like, for to, to set it up for water cooling. And I don't want to do that because that one has the thermal pads that disintegrate. Uh, I'm not gonna run the other lightning because th because of that mounting pressure problem. Um, I might run it someday when I get liquid metal. Like I'm like I'm stuck with using the IHS. I I tried many times to get it working without the IHS. It failed every time. Um, so what I thought I could do is just uh, getting um, liquid metal and putting it under the IHS, like like you would do it on a CPU. Um, like normally putting a liquid metal on a GPU doesn't really make a difference because most of the GPU, like pretty much all GPUs are direct die anyway. But this 580 which is stuck on the IHS is more like a CPU and by putting liquid metal on the IHS I might get close enough to direct die temperatures. I'm not gonna get directly there because there's still an IHS. But I might get close enough so that I can run that card because I really want to run one of the lightnings and that second lightning does have a better core. Like it does 1 GHz on air uh, at 1.15 volts, which no other GF110 uh, has done that from my collection. Like the 560 Ti did it, but that's a GF114, those just clock higher. Um, but yeah. Uh, running that card cold should be fun. Only problem is that card does have Samsung G die memory, which is in terms of temperature scaling pretty much the opposite of E die. Which um, yeah, I mean, D die actually gets better with heat to a certain point. Like I, I ran the card, I took a hair dryer to it, and the card actually like the memory was able to clock better. <laughs> Uh, when it was hot, like I, I, I put in the hairdryer at the memory and suddenly it started clocking better. Only at some point it just stopped scaling because I guess it got too hot. But yeah, GDI apparently like clocks better the hotter it is. And if I run that card with chilled water, well... Yeah, memory might suck. Like, maybe it, it also gets better again. Uh, is this another new... Why didn't it update? Why didn't it update my last one? Compare result online. Yeah, this is uh, this GPU score is not that great again, though. Was the other score higher? I think the other score was actually higher. Why didn't it update? Oh well. Yeah, that's that's from from before. Can I save it? Like, just save it and upload it later. Well, um, okay, so does it run 2500? Like, I mean, the the uh, the other eDie card did 2675 when it was cold, but it was a lot colder than this one. So, yes. And I've now realized that this video is gonna be a lot longer than I thought. I thought it was gonna be really short because, well, the water bucket heats up and at some point it's just gonna be too hot, but... Yeah, now I'm sitting here 
this this clip is 20 minutes long the one before was around four and a half something so yeah uh, we're getting close to well, we are 25 pretty much right now it's getting close to 30 mm -hmm. well yeah but it is getting the temperature on the core is getting quite high um, but I see no artifacts on the memory so far which uh, is a good sign I would say uh, let's just hope that the act like GT2 is more memory intensive than GT1 so this is actually the uh, the real test mm. so well let's can I talk about to uh, entertain people um, I've said before that I'm planning on doing live streams, and I'm still doing that. I'm still planning to do that. I actually I think that uh, 580 Direct 2 run is gonna be live streamed. Um, I just have to get ice before, and I have to get good enough results from my way of doing it. Um, because you you saw in the beginning, I don't have a radiator submerged down there. Because I did that once, and the radiator rusted. And I would like to not have that happen again. So I thought I'm just gonna put the, uh, the tubes into water directly. The only problem is, I have heard that that actually performs worse thermally. Which I believe is um, because, like, um, you should have your inlet at the bottom of the bucket, where you, where the cold water is, and then you have an outlet on, 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 on the top, where the uh, warmer water is. And I think people weren't accounting for that, uh, which actually I'm also not accounting for that right now. I, I would have to get something to properly secure my um, the tubes, uh, which I don't really have right now. I, I've yeah, like I, 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 I could build something, but not right now. It's pretty late. It's uh, yeah, it's 10 p.m. on the spot right now. Um, so we didn't see any artifacts. That's pretty good. Like um, the Direct Zero Two also did 2300 stock, but the Direct Zero Two also has a really bad heatsink and absolutely no memory cooling whatsoever. Which, I mean, the doesn't really like. The reference heatsink for the 580, it does have memory cooling, but who knows how good it actually is, because the base plate does get pretty hot and like it's a blower heatsink. Yeah. Okay. That's a... Okay, we're picking up, like... This is not the highest one, that other one was higher. Okay, now it updated. So, let's just load the website again and save this to... Kind of... Ugh. Uh... 10.45... 25 Okay, you know what? No, just no It's not that big of an achievement to have the best score on this anyway Guess just uh, I'm gonna save that Yeah, um Okay 2600 I think this is gonna crash I think this is gonna really crash because like 2600 on the other card required literal ice cooling. Uh, but who knows? Maybe this one's better. M maybe the memory chips are actually running cooler, not having a heatsink on them, uh, compared to having the reference heatsink on it. Uh, because like it literally just he sinks the heat into the base plate, which has basically no surface area. Um, I mean, it does have quite some surface area, but not. It, it, it doesn't really have like cooling on it. It has no cooling fins and no airflow. So, yeah. No, it doesn't have a base plate, but yeah, okay. <laughs> it did crash. Okay, 2550 then. Like, I mean, yeah. It's a, it, like 2500 is already a 200 megahertz improvement just from taking the card colder. Which confirms the behavior I have seen from other EDI. Um, but yeah. Let's see if it does 
So, what things did I talk about? Uh, like this video, like oh, 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 yeah, that is uh, that's some heavy memory artifact thing right there, but it's not crashing. <laughs> it is, it is still running. <laughs> oh god, that's yeah, epilepsy warning. Oh god, that's um, that's some of the worst artifacting I've ever seen. <laughs> Yeah, no, okay, no, no chance this runs. Um, 25, 25. Is, is that gonna run? Or, like, I don't know where the memory straps change on this card. I guess it, it is changing at, like, every 100, so, like, 2,500. Or, like, may, maybe it is, like, 2,500. It's using one memory step, and, and, and then everything higher than 2500 up to 2600, it's using a different memory strap, and that memory strap might be too difficult to run for this card right now. Um, maybe it changes at 50 things, and this runs now. Um, I, sh I guess I could make an investigation of that, but it's gonna be a lot of time that I don't really wanna put in right now, because well, I mean, just putting the memory to lower clocks seems to work. This is not artifacting, so... Ah, it's out okay, it's starting to artifact a bit, which uh, does make sense. Like, when the memory system is under load, it does heat up. Uh, our core is getting kinda hot right now. Like, this is actually... <laughs> that that core temp on, on that GPU is actually pretty close to what my 2080 Ti daily runs on. To be fair though, my 2080 Ti does have a 360 and a thick 280 red, and I have also recently removed my glass, uh, my tempered glass side panel, because I want better cooling, and also because it doesn't really make a difference visually. I think actually the the, the lights and like it looks better because of the the, the glass kind of takes away from the lighting a bit, like from all the RGB that people. Well, I mean, my system is pretty RGB up. Uh, I've set it to pretty uniform colors though, like it's mostly blue with some purple. And yeah, uh, this is back to artifacting a lot. Really a lot. But it just, like, I think this is just about to finish. Like, come on, you could do it. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yep, yep, come on. Ah, oh, we did it. Whew. <laughs> <laughs> it's just gotta get through combined. I mean, while the CPU test runs, the memory can actually cool down a bit, which is good. I think that's actually why combined rarely ever crashes for me. Because in the CPU test, like, the GPU is not under load, and it cools down. Um, so yeah. That's probably why combined never really crashes uh, for me. Like, it did crash, like, one or two times. But generally... If GT1 and 2 pass, combined is gonna pass as well. Unless you have like cooling problems and it gets really really hot suddenly. Oh, ah, oh, come on. <laughs> well, that makes free. Yeah, okay. Um, now I'm eating my own words. Shouldn't have said that. That's a that's the best GPU score we've had yet, though. Why is physics score so low? Like, what? 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 what, what why? Why? You did twenty six hundred, didn't you? Uh, twenty one six hundred, didn't you? Like, why is it so low now? Then, uh, then okay. Um, <laughs> let's try this. And if this doesn't pass, I I I guess we're gonna finish up here. Again, this is just a test run, and I don't really want to get this 50 minutes long. Like, this clip is 30 minutes now, so we, the entire video should be 35. Um, yeah, I guess there's no way of preventing this going into the 40s. But maybe I can keep it under 50. Yeah, but I mean, this is pretty much what the live stream would look like. Um, I am gonna try to put in a second camera. Like, when I live stream, I'm gonna use OBS anyway. Um, so I might as well try to put in a second camera. Like, I have two more smartphones that I could use as cameras. Um, 
so I could have like a camera showing the the bench to look at just because that's a nice thing to have I guess the uh, only problem is I only have one bracket to hold a smartphone like a camera and I'm using it right now um, I have that other that, like that other stand that I'm carrying around like the one that I used in the beginning of the video but that one's motorized and if you use it for a long time the motors sometimes shut down because they overheat even if you just keep the camera pointed in one direction which um, and I mean by a long time I mean like 15 minutes so yeah uh, that's not gonna be enough so I gotta figure out a different way of somehow mounting that camera which hmm, who knows what I'm what I'm gonna think of maybe I'm just gonna buy one of these brackets um, speaking of buying things, um, I wanted to talk about this in the beginning actually. So I went to AliExpress and some other sites like, a, oh come on, no, yeah, crashed. It's a core crash though. Like I think that's a, like this solid color thing. That's core, from what I know. So by now, our water is just getting too hot. Uh, yeah, but like, yeah, I think we can just um, stop benching now, like, water's getting too hot, and uh, I'm just gonna shut this down. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna make a cut here. So I have now turned off the uh, fan, because benching session is over. So, yeah, that's uh, the setup still, pump still running, because the power supply is still on. Um... So yeah, here we have our car. How hot did the... Uh, that's pretty cold. That didn't get hot at all. And memory chips. Those are also just slightly warm. Like, I mean, they, they did have time to cool down already, but like... It wasn't that long. So yeah, these fans seem to work quite effectively. Oh, it's just cold ambient. And uh, yeah. So... That's... Uh, for the uh, test run of this thing and um, so yeah let's uh, I'm just gonna center the camera on this and you can look at it by a ramble uh, yeah so I went to Aliexpress and eBay and some other retailer to get fans and uh, I bought basically another one of these loops worth of components minus this pump because that was quite expensive so I got tubes fittings uh, a block and a different pump which was quite a lot cheaper than this one and what I'm gonna do is, I also got a red and fans. Um, like the new one's gonna be a 360 one, my current one is a 280. Uh, both are magical because those are just cheap and I know it works. Um, so yeah, uh, what I'm gonna do with that second loop is, I'm gonna basically build a second one of these, but I'm going to swap out this pump. The cheap one is going in this one and then this pump is going into the new loop. Because the new loop does have a bigger radiator, it is going to use some Arctic P12 PWM PST fans um, instead of the very cheap and crappy like these here. <laughs> Those are the fans that uh, I used before. Very cheap and crappy. Um, that's the radiator I was talking about. Like that's a magical radiator. I'm gonna. I ordered one of these, but as a 360, not a 240 like this. Uh, here, by the way, is the 580 Direct 2 ready to be volt modded. And, uh, yeah, and you can see my modding desk is a mess. Um, but, yeah. So, yeah, I'm gonna build the second loop. And that new loop is gonna be for GPUs only. And this one is gonna be for CPUs and GPUs. Because the new block that I'm getting, like this block, right here, that's actually a CPU block that I um, modified to work on GPUs by drilling extra holes into it. And I think my stand just... Nope, the motor is still working. Okay, don't know what happened. Um, so yeah, that, that block is a CPU block that I modified to work on GPUs by just drilling holes into it. Uh, the new block is actually made for GPUs. Like, it does come with a base plate that already mounts on GPUs. And it does have a better fin structure. So, uh, let's, uh, let me show that again. I'm going to turn on the light. 
Oh, I don't know if you can see that. Ah, you can see it a bit. So I can see how that fin structure, it, it, it doesn't have fins in just this direction, how is that fins in this direction. And while there's, that does add more surface area, it also makes the water flow a lot more turbulent and basically it decreases performance. The new block that I'm getting has a structure like, um, let's just show it, show my main system. It does have the same kind of structure that my K block here right has, like it just has fins in one direction. Um, so that should be better for, well, water flow. And yeah, and it can also put tubes like up. And on this block, they always go like that way. The other block can do tubes like that, so I can mount it better. Uh, though, like right now, that's actually fine. Um, and then, yeah, like bigger radiator. I'm gonna use these fans. I actually bought five of the fans, so the current loop is getting these new fans as well. And uh, yeah, and I hope that the new loop will just be overall better. And this loop. Right now I'm gonna use it on the uh, i7-960 on the Rampage 2 gene because I, I don't have any other cooler that fits on that board. Um, but this one does and it works quite well. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm gonna take this pump, put it in the new loop because this is like, a, this is a DDC from AlphaCool. Uh, the new pump which is like Der Bauer once made like made a video recently where he got a water cooling kit from AliExpress for 70 euros. The pump that I'm getting is pretty much the same one that he had in that kit, and he like said it performs okayish, like decently. And okayish is enough for uh, that loop when I use the i7 um, because like why while an i7 960 can get quite hot, it wasn't really getting that hot, so I don't think it needs a pump like that. Well, GPUs, like, I've, I've once made some rough math about power consumption on the a GTX 580 with the settings that I use, and I think it... Oh, I don't remember the numbers now. Like, I think... While we were benching this right now, we consumed something like 500 watts or something, which, yeah, that's, uh, that's a lot more than a CPU does. So this needs more cooling, more just more better cooling. Um, so that's why this pump is going into the uh, new GPU loop and the cheap pump, which like it's a 15 euro pump. It's more expensive than the block. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like that pump, like it can be loud. I don't really care. Um, as long as it works, it's gonna be okay. Um, so yeah, and if not, like that pump used to be in that loop like, before I had this one, <laughs> that one, and then a, a different, slightly different, smaller pump used to actually be the pump of this loop here. So, yeah, I still have that <laughs> as a last resort. Um, so, yeah. And um, is there anything more I want to say? Uh, I don't I, I, Like, I could talk about things that I want to do like I currently have a like I have quite a backlog of things to do like I, I can do this thing with the direct co2 card like I've said in the video I also want to mod the 560 ti 448 again and then do the same thing uh, because I actually removed mods from that one because they were badly done and I want to redo them and I also broke some things I can I think uh, so I'm just gonna redo that card um, I wanna, like I still have, let's just show it again. Why, why am I not showing it? So this card, that's a 7770 from Sapphire. Um, it has dual-sided memory, which means the memory clock on this thing sucks. Like it has eight chips instead of four, like you usually get. Um, but I do wanna, I do, I do wanna mod this because I wanted to mod HD 7770s before. The first one died. The second one that I actually modded already belongs to a friend, and for some reason it doesn't just it just doesn't want to boot in my test bench. Um, uh, this one does work in my test bench, so I'm, I'm planning on modding this one. Then of course that's gonna get vote modded, as I said. That card, which is the uh, 
like you can see the this thing this card looks awful absolutely awful um, this has been through a lot of abuse but this one is getting modded as well well remodded then I actually also decided, like I wanted to mess with this HD 7950 a bit more, but I need a BIOS that removes over current protection and I don't know where to get it or how to make it. Uh, this one, like I said, this would be kind of fun to do things with. Don't really plan on doing anything now, though. Uh, that one sucks, I'm not using that one except for rendering. That one I need a VRM heatsink for. That one, not really interested right now, but maybe later. And then... Well, that, I'm gonna run the Matrix one day, but yeah. Um, I said why I'm not using, doing these. Uh, that's the uh, Wind Force I bought back that I don't really wanna run because I feel it's gonna die again. That's the car that I just keep as a... Uh, this I actually considered just making an e-power out of that one as well because the VRAM on these is, is so weak. And like there's a, If I really want a green PCB one, I guess I can get another one. Um, depowering that is still on the table. That's the dead e-power that I threw away. Don't know why I kept it. Uh, yeah, uh, lot of ramblings. But yeah, like um, the things I'm planning to. Oh, and, and I completely forgot about this thing, the e part 970. That's what that one's gonna get its VMEM modded, and it's gonna get cap modded. Um, it's just that. The back of the PCB kind of sucks for cap modding, and that's why I've been putting it off. Um, but that one's gonna get modded as well, uh, because, well, it's an, it's an e-powered card, I wanna play with it. Um, yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. Like, the I, the next thing I'm gonna do is world mod this, and then run it uh, without the IGS. I'm gonna remove that. And, uh, yeah. Um, it's pretty much everything. Like, yeah, like this video is long enough, but I think we're actually over 40 minutes now. Yeah, we are over 40 minutes. <laughs> well, whatever. <laughs> I'm gonna touch 50, so I'm gonna sign off here. Um, thank you for watching this very rambly, random... Like, it was, it was literally just a test run for my water bucket. And, well, I mean, we, we did get a platform record. I guess that's fine, even though that's not really difficult to do, whatever. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching, I uh, hope you enjoyed, and until we see each other, each other next time, goodbye.